welcome to the NFSTC Forensic Update. We finally settled into our new office as the final piece went into place this month, our brand new sign. Want to see the entire office space but can't make it out to Largo? Check out the virtual tour on our YouTube page. <sighs> Advancements in technology is making crime fighting safer and more effective. Men and women in uniform are seeing benefits and advancements from rapid DNA to lasers that can sense chemicals. One of the latest gadgets looks like it's straight from James Bond. Star Chase has created a GPS device that can be launched from a police car onto a suspect's vehicle, tracking the car remotely so it can be more safely intercepted by law enforcement, potentially reducing high-speed chases. Right now, the technology is being used in Los Angeles, but other jurisdictions are looking into adding it into their arsenal of state-of-the-art crime-fighting tools. In the past 20 years, DNA has transformed the field of forensic science. The genetic coding has been able to crack countless cases across the globe. But as NFSTC's forensic biologist Rob O'Brien explains, there's been one limitation, identical twins. The type of testing that we do in forensic laboratories is basically we're looking at a specific sequence that is known to occur in all individuals. But what is different is the number of times it is repeated from one individual to the next. With identical twins, that sequence is present in them also, but the number of times it is repeated is the same between the two twins. Therefore, traditional forensic DNA analysis methods cannot tell the difference between twins, identical twins. To get around the limitations of DNA with um, identical twins, investigative techniques are then used to determine which of the twins had access to the scene, which one would have had a motive, um, or which one may have had an alibi. And that way you can narrow down and determine which tw twin is actually the perpetrator of the crime. In the rare times when forensics and old-fashioned detective work can't completely identify one twin over the other, the European-based Eurofins Genomics says they have the answer. By comparing the DNA of identical male twins against one of the male offspring, their scientists say they have identified mutations in the sequencing between the father and child that aren't found between the two brothers. The finding was recently used in a criminal case in Boston, leading to a conviction in a decade-old case. Since the isolated mutations are currently only found on the Y chromosome, there's no word on when or if the same mutations will be found in female identical twins. <sighs> Hard to believe it's already been a year since we released the updated Crime Scene Investigation Guide. So far, the free guide has been downloaded more than 22,000 times and is used in agencies and schools here at home and internationally, where it's received increasingly positive feedback. Greg Schofield from Toronto uses part of the guide as required reading, saying overall, your manual is very well thought out and allowing for minor variations covers everything I want my students to understand in order to prepare a crime scene diagram. You can grab your free PDF or e-reader version through the NFSTC website. <sighs> Nominations for the first annual Reader's Choice Awards from Forensic Magazine are in, and our CSI Guide and online training courses are up for two. Right now, a panel of readers are looking over our online training tools in the digital forensic tools and products and the training and services categories. Winners will be announced in late October. The NFSTC team will be rolling up our sleeves for the fourth annual St. Petersburg Science Festival on October 18th. The free festival, held on the University of South Florida St. Petersburg campus, encourages children to become interested in the science, technology, engineering, art, math, or STEAM fields. Students from Pinellas Park's Criminal Justice Academy will be assisting in the day's activities. Be sure to check it out if you're in the Tampa Bay area. That's it for this edition of the Forensic Update. For the latest news and updates from NFSTC, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. For NFSTC, I'm Bill Duffin, and we'll see you next time.